weight behind her. I don't know. I, I'm trying to be nice. You said to be nice. I mean, I, <laughs> the Rain Gary. It's fine. Regardless of how well she did, I was uh, pleased that they took that chance. Yes, the, the positive but, I'm trying to spin from this. <laughs> at the same time, uh, I think it's it's worth noting that first of all, I mean, part of the reason Lorraine Gary got the role in the first Jaws at all is that her husband was head of the studio. Yes, it's just um, like, yeah. And um, sorry, I think Lorraine Gary is one of the weakest aspects of the original film. I don't think she's a terribly great actress. <laughs> I barely remember her in the original. Uh, which probably agrees with your statement. <laughs> it has been some years since I first since I saw uh, Jaws last. Uh, but yes, she's not an element that stands out to me because you know she's not in the second half of the film. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> there's the other three guys who take up much more of your focus. Uh, nor is she Maya Vaughan. Uh, nor is she the shark. That's the five most memorable aspects of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember uh, Mrs. Kintner more than I remember uh, Ellen. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. And she's back in this one, <laughs> uh, briefly. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's, she's... The, the movie should have been about her, you know, Jaws the Revenge. She takes her revenge. Yeah, <laughs> she goes after the shark. <laughs> yeah, Martin Brody didn't have a heart attack. <laughs> Mrs. Kittler got him. <laughs> Turned into a slasher movie. She's like Jason's mom. <laughs> I'll be here for it. That sounds, that sounds fantastic. So okay, let's 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 kind of go through the plot a little bit. Uh, so we open up on Amity Island with uh, okay, well, we start off with a phone call between uh, Sean and Ellen are making dinner there's a phone call from Michael which Sean just is immediately unbearable I did not like him I, I, I'm <laughs> just, he, he's, he's just doing so he's being so manic and so like active on the phone and yelling and being he's just being too happy too early on in this film I didn't, I didn't yeah. like it yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was kind of pleased when he died like, good that, that energy is gone I didn't want. I couldn't <laughs> stick with that for ninety minutes. No, thank you. Well, I mean, they, they basically set him up to die. I mean, you know, the, they 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 present him in a way that you go, "Yep, he's he's gonna be gone here in a few minutes." <laughs> well, I was actually surprised when he died because he's Sean Brody. He like he's he's been in. He's one of the few characters who's been in all of these films. Different mm -hmm. actor every time, but the character has been there. It'd, it'd be like. Uh, killing off John Connor in a later Terminator film, <laughs> which, which, <laughs> which they do. Bad example, Jay. Bad example. <laughs> but like, when, when that happened, it was surprising. Uh, so, same thing here. Uh, I was trying to if they kill off like Jeff Goldblum uh -huh. in the next Jurassic Park film, <laughs> which they better not do. God damn it! Oh, I was gonna say you're treading on dangerous yeah, ground there. It might happen, but it's it, uh, it better not. And he's not exactly been an, an integral part in any of the films today. Like, he's mm -hmm. been. He's, he's barely in the first one. He's just a small child. The second one, he's one of the kids on the boat, on on the raft at the end. And in the third one, he just kind of disappears half an hour before the end of the film. Uh, well, and with, I, with I, I, <laughs> when I've watched these ones, I've always tried to work out if the aging of the kids <laughs> actually works out. Because no. <laughs> I'm guessing, from my memory of the first film, that he's about five, six years old. Yeah. Which puts him, if and, and you know, if it's taking place at the time the movie came out 1975 that makes him very close in age to i what i actually am i was born in 71 i'm 50 this year so so point is in 1987 i was 16 years old i don't think sean brody is deputy of amity island yet no i think that that's fair um but yeah that the ages this takes a similar approach to ages as the National Lampoon's vacation films do to their, their kids in that they just all kind of fluctuate some where, where like by Jaws 2, Michael had aged like 10 years more than right. Sean had. So it's, it's all a moot point. I think uh, <laughs> it's not, not something to get too hung up on. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it so... happens all the times. So, I mean, that was the thing when uh, I remember when I was a kid, there were like a couple of TV shows, um, uh, growing Pains is one of the famous ones where they had a baby and then like the next season she's seven years old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the girl that plays the waitress, by the way, in the Avengers, the red haired waitress that, you know, like Captain oh, yeah. America saves. She, that was the little girl on Growing Pains. Anyway. I, I'd love totally it if that became a plot point. If like some, they, some scientist showed up and was like, excuse me, we, your daughter has aged seven years <laughs> in the course of a summer. We have to do some experimentation on her. 
<laughs> she's a mutant. That's going to come up later in the MCU. She's going to be one of these mutants, and that's going to explain the rapid aging on Growing Pains. It's all connected, it's all connected. folks. Disney owns everything. Yeah. Uh, so they don't own Jaws yet, though. No, it's only a matter of time. No, they don't. But they will. Look, one day there'll be a... That, that's the other theme park down the road, you yeah. know? <laughs> a shark wearing Mickey ears be right. in the future. Uh, so uh, Sean is, is at his job. Uh, as a police deputy, he's just heading home when a call comes in and it's as a, a a bit of a log or something just kind of caught as some driftwood caught on something out, out in the bay that he needs to go and see to. Uh, he's the only person who can see to it because the Coast Guard is busy and the other guy, Lenny, whoever Lenny is, is off preventing cow <laughs> tipping somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, great little detail. So he goes off to, he takes the boat out to, uh, dislodge this what turns to be just a, a big log and whilst he's out there doing that shark appears bites his arm off uh oh he no one can hear him because there's the the christmas pageant rehearsal is, yeah is it's because they're the all dog. singing it's the joy of the holiday season which drowns a, out the screams yeah. which was a, a nice note i thought that might have been like Chekhov's christmas pageant that would have been like the climax of the film is we see the pageant or something but it wasn't <laughs> not a big deal uh but so so it, arm gets bitten off and then whole boat taken out sinks gone <laughs> which as, like i say i was i was surprised uh that he it, he not only died but it was like the opening scene it's one of the more graphic deaths of the film, actually. I mean, it, it starts things off with a bang, for sure. Well, it, it's one of the more graphic deaths because there are very few deaths in this film. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, you got me on that one, for sure. But I think there are three. <laughs> um, uh, not counting the dream sequences or the one that was rewritten. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I think, I think you, you could argue there are seven, but there are three actual confirmed kills minus the shot mm -hmm. i think um yeah sean there is it actually is there two is it just sean and the banana boat i think it's just those There's two sean and the banana boat and yeah you may be right oh jesus uh, this film just got worse with me talking about it uh good. <laughs> um so yeah it's quite a, quite a brutal scene where his his arm is bitten off and he's like what? he looks down in surprise to see no arm at his yeah. side. <laughs> which, like, um, I, I enjoyed. <laughs> he, do, he doesn't discover that he has no arm until about you know, a minute and a half after we do. <laughs> oh. I was half expecting him to just like, wait, hang on a minute, sorry, it's in my sleeve. There we go, it's mm -hmm. out. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's the end of Sean Brody. And then um, cut to his body on a slab in the in the morgue, and Ellen is given his, uh, his his belongings, including his gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that not police issue? Uh, is that just something you, you hand out? Give him his badge as well. That's a good question. I don't know. Which again, I mean, I was it, expecting... it would, have, would have been good if it had played into things later on, like you know, as she goes after the shark later in the film, if she had used Sean's gun to try and yeah, kill that's... the shark genuinely what I was expecting to happen and with her last be like this is for Sean or something <laughs> uh, but no that's that's the last we see of the gun uh, the, this franchise well I say the last uh, issues the last uh, films in this franchise are not are great at setting things up that don't come off my favorite being so far in Jaws 3 mm -hmm. there's a whole scene dedicated to Dennis Quaid and uh, his girlfriend switching pages and it being no part of the plot at all. Uh, there's a whole scene. Like, what is, is my page or your page? Oh, my pages. And then no one's ever paged again. So, um, <laughs> uh, good. So, and they, and they say when uh, the scene where Michael uh, shows up with his uh, his partner and daughter, uh, they, they say, like, oh, Tiffany, who's Sean's, Sean's girlfriend, had to be sedated. Uh, so she's mm -hmm. just, she doesn't appear in the rest of the film, but she was so distraught she has to be sedated. So, uh, wonderful. This is a very 80s view of, of women getting attack of the vapors and not, not being able well, to cope. One thing we've skipped over here with the opening segments I, I was going to ask about is how much do you think Roy Scheider got just to have his, you know, very, very large portrait of himself oh. hanging in the police station? His headshot, you mean, that he used yeah. for acting work? Right. 
<laughs> I hope a million dollars. I hope you got paid so much money for it. <laughs> well, and and he appears. He's going, in he's a going well. Kane got a house out of this thing. I need to get something. <laughs> he appears in quite a few flashbacks as well. Uh, which right. Quite a few vi- visions of things Ellen Brody could never have seen. Uh, yes. All, all of them, <laughs> them sepia toned, even if they occurred a week beforehand. It's still uh, tinted like it happened centuries ago. It's the good old days, 1975. <laughs> it was 12 years ago. It's before they invented color. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, Michael shows up and uh, goes consoles his mother, Ellen, who uh, she explains her theory that the shark specifically came for Sean and waited for him, uh, to which he replies, sharks don't commit murder. Maybe my fir- my favourite line of the film. I don't know. It's just <laughs> glorious. Because <laughs> we know in Jaws 2, there's a zoologist character who says that sharks don't hold a grudge. They don't, don't go for revenge. Because that's what uh, Martin's theory what that was mm. so we know this, this isn't tr- what happens but this film is called Jaws of Revenge so there we go yeah uh, um, and they have a, they have a little daughter Helen's granddaughter uh, Thea played by Judith Barcy who has a very tragic backstory that I really don't want to get into on this podcast uh, no thank you look that up yourselves if you want listeners it's not fun she is adorable in this uh, even she comes inside. Oh, Sean died. Is he going to come back? Like, is uh, uh. <laughs> a difficult conversation to have later. I, I think she's a, a little five-year-old girl. Um, but yeah, they convince mm-hmm. they convince Ellen to go with them to the Bahamas. She's reluctant and then agrees. Uh, but prior to that, uh, Michael and his wife Carla, who I watched this, I, I kind of I recognised Carla from something. She's played by Karen Young. I couldn't place it. I looked her up, and she's in Daylight with Sylvester Stallone. She's the... Uh, oh. There's a couple with a child, and she's the mother in that couple. Uh, Sarah Crichton's See, character. It took me a minute, too, to recognize Lance Guest, because like, I know his name, and you know I know his face, and I was watching it going, all right, there's something that I watched over and over again, and I was trying to remember what it was, and then finally I realized, oh, yeah, he's in The Last Starfighter. Of course, he's, you know... <laughs> several years younger and doesn't have a beard and all that uh in that film so it it took me a moment to to realize that uh, he's in that much better movie uh this is the only thing i've ever seen him in apart from one episode of house which i do not remember him being in uh so that's the last star fighter not something i've seen i haven't seen halloween 2 uh just i haven't seen anything else in his cv so to me he just he kind of looked like army hammer was my only reference, oh, yeah. which um, would be unfortunate these days, but he doesn't look like Army Hammer anymore because <laughs> he's 57. <laughs> you need to see The Last Starfighter. Sorry, it's a fun, fun movie. Uh, okay. One of the first examples of CGI effects in that, you know, they did all the spaceship battles and stuff with, with CGI. So it went, in 1984, we're watching it going, oh, this is cool. This was all done with a computer. <laughs> Amazing. I, I'm up for seeing it. It's just it's never crossed my path before. So I'll, I'll make a note to to watch The Last Starfighter. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so he so <laughs> when he and he and uh, he and Carla are walking along the beach, uh, just kind of talking about it. And then he just sprints off mid conversation. He just runs along the beach full pelt. And uh, uh, Carla shouts, "Like, where are you going?" He's like, "Nowhere," and just keeps <laughs> running. <laughs> Which is a scene I really enjoyed because he's processing with his grief. Uh, so maybe he's he's a runner. Like I, I've taken up running in the past few years. I find it's very therapeutic to just get up and go for a run. So I I, I get this. I completely buy it. Uh, You're crazy <laughs> that way, Jay. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's you know, it's fun. Run for relaxation. It, it, hey, it works. I, I've been in a real bad mood before, and I was like, I'm just going to go out for a little run, just like 5k or something, and I've run a half marathon, <laughs> and just off the back of nothing, and I felt a lot better and a lot more tired afterwards. But it, if you haven't got anything to do on a day, just going for a run is quite nice. Okay, come sometimes. come and do that here where I live at 6,000 feet above sea level no. and see how you feel. That's it. I, my, my run involved going to the beach and running along the beach for a while because I live by the sea. <laughs> So very different places to run. I, I've, I've come to visit you and climb some mountains, I think, rather than not necessarily run up. So yeah, so they convince Ellen to come with them, and they fly a little plane down to the Bahamas. Okay, now, well, now wait, wait. I, uh, help me remember, though. Oh, yes, okay. 
at, after the running on the beach and, you know, we basically have the dissolve to indicate they're heading off to the Bahamas. Doesn't the camera then go linger on the piece of driftwood that's, it does. that's there? 